<laughs> wow, it looked really too weird. Darwin D's 2007. Darwin D's circa 2008. This is really nice. For a girl? Yeah. Looks like for a cartoon woman. <laughs> we have our clothing organized by bands. Over here you have your modest mouse wear. <laughs> What's your the modest mouse? Egyptian hip hop. Strokes wear. Hives. Shitty pickings in this motherfucker. DJ Jeff Elliott. Woo! No, I'm DJing again, man. DJ Jeff. Bedford Avenue, rife with hipster cliches, kombucha, multi green going on here. For us, this is the end. These are the final four shows after over a year of, vo of voyaging. Voyaging. And there, there is our noble ship, DJ. Well, what's the DJ name again? DJ Jeff. DJ Jeff. <laughs> DJ Jeff. Not a fucking bunker. The goddamn. I got the day off tomorrow. A two band show tonight. And now I got five packs of fucking clams. Not one fucking bunker. What bunker? It's a bad fish that you need to fish for. Right up to the family farm. And you got two bunker and you want to stay all night if it gets wet. I swear to God. It's like. I got in a fight one night because I threw a couple of clam shells no. in and I thought I was throwing bunker or whatever. <laughs> it was crazy, but meanwhile, they got none. God. This was on there before, right? Every man is my superior. Yeah, I know there, but all this guy and something on was on. He goes, hey, what'd you tell the boy? What'd they tell you? He goes, keep telling him. He, he's smarter than me. Yeah, it's a Ryan, fucking pier. You that know sounds what I mean? like uh, shit on the sides. You can't even go out to the side. You have to be stuck like. You know hey, man, no, 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 fucking guy. You motherfucker, I'm off tomorrow. Oh, we still have. I go, you motherfucker. Order more, you son of a bitch. Yeah, you're right. out of bunker, you motherfucker. Do I have to pay you in advance? I keep begging him. Dude, do I have to pay you in advance, you son of a bitch? What was the, uh... Did you say Mark Jacoby? <laughs> Richard, yeah, whatever the hell, Mark Jacoby. What the fuck do I know, man? Richard does that. Is he somebody? Riot. I don't know. Mark Jacobs, but I'm not sure. Uh, I, like, I like, I like, I like... Which one? Oh, that charges the AA batteries? Yeah. I saw that. I needed real love, which is the kind of love that I did get from Michelle Dorrance especially before I even, you know, took the first step towards, like, you know, this particular album. She was always a huge supporter of my music, and that was, you know, that was instrumental. <laughs> Give it to me. Can you, uh, clap? Throw it up and clap. Down into the three. I know. Oh, oh, so I'll be in the middle. Yeah. Darwin really and, met. and Michelle are coming. Very back young. Right now. He used to carpool too, so with my little sister. Up. His older sister and my There's little sister were like in a group of girls. You know that's a Frank. So I was taller than you. No, when we met, really, when you oh, said when like we met? probably like a kid. I mean, he would have been an elementary school aged boy. But really, getting to becoming friends and during when we were tap dancing together in the North Carolina Youth Tap Ensemble. Literally, we'd spend every Saturday together, whether we were hanging out or not, from then on. And then when he was probably like 15 or 16. 16, 16 is when we bonded. 15, 16. I was 16. Didn't I drink? 
40s during the summer oh, when I was 18. Oh, don't say it! The truth is, we had so fly. much fun. We had fun walking around the city. We had fun doing this around the city. Especially that summer. He was in a program at Wesley in Connecticut, and he would come and visit every weekend. And then I moved out of Harlem and canvassed him at the Burger King just down the street to move into this place on the Lower East Side. She sat me down in the Burger King to talk about it, and then by the end of the night, we were like going to every <laughs> ATM. <laughs> we couldn't get enough cash. Our banks limited us to like 500 each. We were trying to get cash back from the supermarket and trying to get enough cash to get to the landlord. We advertised on Craigslist when we found Andres. <laughs> yeah. We wrote, $400, Lower East Side, it's possible. Because we were splitting it through the rent three we were ways. like, do you want to live, who wants to live, you want to live in a dive? I remember that. <laughs> yeah, oh, we were like, one bedroom, tenement, bathtub in the kitchen, toilet in the bedroom. Like, it was like, you got it in you? You know you want this. Because you would work, and then when you got out, it was like, plate. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> All the way. It was like, well, I'm working till six. Do it ever. So much fun. Because I had no idea where to go or anything. It didn't matter what we were doing. We could just hang out in the living room. We could walk around. It was just so much fun. That was what having you in the city was for me. It was awesome. Just fun. Well, if you hadn't been here, I wouldn't have come.
Did you eat it while walking or did you just You got it? So you like me better than you like the chips. Yeah. This is my cousin Zach. This is Jack. I used to work with Joe. Wait, hold for a pause for one second. This is Paul Simon's son. Oh, yeah. That was a great cover. No But yeah, man, great show. And like amazing cover. I'm so happy. I got this dude. was nice enough to let me back and like say hi. Paul Simon's son. Yeah. Jesus, crazy. The thing we did to Paul Simon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zach, is it? Yes. Hi. Cousin, you had your chance! <laughs> so, what's up, Darwin? Did you ever make out with Stacy or what? Stacy, Stacy. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I know that. I, know. I knew the answer before I asked you. I did not know that. <laughs> He's not that old. He's like 33. Uh, <laughs> Is there somebody making a documentary about it? In high school, Darwin told me that even thinking another human being is hot is lustful. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Hey guys. <laughs> hey, Dude, I wouldn't it's miss you in New York for any possible man. Your You're fucking brilliant, you know. Yeah. Oh, that was phenomenal. You're like, this is like 20 times well, sexier than you are now. Yeah, Scottish. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't talk at all. Are you coming to my room? Yes, coming. Okay. Should I do I need to RSVP online? Will you, you play do. a song for a wedding? Okay. What? Yes. <laughs> will you write a brand new wedding song? No. Look, it's like Christmas coming for will Christmas. Will you write a brand new wedding song? <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you. Sold out. Oh, really? Yeah. Great. Um, you want to settle up? Yeah. Do you need some time? I can do it now. Yeah, we sold it out again. Hey, JJ. Hey. All right. That was really good. That was really good. <laughs> Oh, hey, Shelfa. Hey, how are you? Sorry. Uh, no, but how are you? <laughs> Good, sorry. I, like, I was just like, I've missed you so many times, like uh, in Australia. Like, I've tried to see you like three times, and tonight we're, we're just on a holiday in a, in, like, in New York. Should yeah. so we take one picture with everybody? Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, oh, dude, that's so fucking cool. cool. That Enya. was insane. <laughs> <laughs> what about Enya? <laughs> <India? laughs> Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Right. Thank you. So okay. Do you mind if we steal a photo for the ah, three Aussie girls okay. that have been? Oh, three Aussie girls. I just pulled that one on here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Should I put this in the bag? Okay. Uh, yeah. In there. Yeah. Oh, do you think I should get my hair case? Yeah, you might as well. We'll be back there. You know. You never know. Are you sure? Drop. Should I get some? Yeah. What do you think? Up to you. Yeah, yeah. Let's do. Let's do Verrazano. Verrazano. Yeah. So you, like, Greg, you could. BQE you know West. How to do it. Thanks, Greg. Do you uh, do you want me to put it in Philadelphia for the in the GPS? <coughs> That's it, we're out there playing shows. That's the most important thing you can be doing as a band. Right on time, he said that we should park here and run the risk of getting a $40 ticket. Yeah, yeah that's his, that's his advice. That. You know the interesting thing about being a musician, when you start to get interested in sounds and notes and stuff, you never realize that the consequence of that is a life of lifting heavy things in and out of buildings and in and out of cars. Into this guy. <laughs> Keeps your dick hard, yeah? I've been carrying this since I was in eighth grade. Wow, yeah. the room is cool. Wooden balcony? This is a beautiful venue. You know what? I'm not Jack like Pastorius, yeah, but you know, yeah. neither Greg nor I try to, like, you know, wax 
poetic or fill with, yeah. you know, some ridiculous chops that we don't have. We're just gonna play exactly what it's supposed to be and it's so simple and it's so perfect. I'm such a sensitive little prick, uh, prick, child, bastard, kid, bitch, existentialist, or whatever. Sensitive, spiritual moth. Because I swear, one day everything's great, and the next day I get to feel like, why am I here? But I, I can only sort of conjecture that it has to do with the fact that I'm not writing, because when I am writing, everything's cool. So, so when you come home, like when you have time to just think and write music, I've never actually been on the tour before. I've been going really kind of crazy on the last leg of this tour because uh, I've just been cut off from my ability, my you know, as far as free time goes, like my ability to create music. You have to be available, you have to have the time to kind of like catch as soon as anything starts to come out, once you've opened it. And that's the problem with being on tours because you can't, you have two hours here and there, but that's not enough. Because <laughs> then you get a cramp. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I got you, go ahead. Alright, you just do that until I give you the signal and you go to your instruments and you continue looking regal until the first note. We don't do anything? Yeah. Oh. What does regal mean? Sorry. Yeah. Regal it's means like you get big balls. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead.
Do you, is it supposed to be a good? So there was a Cheers Elephant and a Drink of Buttercup. That was the six what's that? Six what's, the singer of Cheers is Darren. 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 It's definitely Darren. There's like a full water bottle of sweat <laughs> in this shirt. It was hot on that stage. See, I figure if you're gonna get a dry shirt by the end of the night, you kinda gotta give it a head start. These are the things I've learned. Because you only have a limited amount of time before you gotta take it in the van, and then you got this nasty wet shirt dangling in front of everyone's face in the van. And people shove it places because they don't want it near them, and then it gets lost. Is not necessarily edible. Yeah, no, no, it can be anything. It can be anything. Yeah, absolutely uh, anything. Looking for the winner of the truck stop game, the cheapest, quirkiest item you can find. Uh, I was thinking this. Don't bother me. I'm crabby. Crabmans. The runner-up. We were in LA coming back from Australia. Michelle was one of the people to venture out into the into LAX and find some snacks. We were all hungry and she found some snacks. She, she brought back a bag of honey mustard pretzels. And then she left it with me and I ate the whole thing. 
and I, I wrote into my phone, on this date, I wrote, buy Michelle pretzels. Are you playing the game? I am. Do you have something? No. It looks like you're hiding something I in your sweater. <laughs> I think we all look like we're stealing. <laughs> we're like milling around and like hiding items. Well, first of all, Michelle, I'd finally like to uh, get you back for the honey pretzels that I <laughs> ate in an LAX. You're so or, sweet. I mean, Los Angeles. Thank you. My attention was pulled to the air freshener section of the store. And uh, I saw, you know, first there's mostly traditional air fresheners. And then I saw leather, and I thought, huh, that's kind of funny. And then I saw a new car, and I thought, oh, that's even a little funnier. And then I decided to go for black ice. <laughs> what is that? Black, look what I got. A dollar thirty-nine. It's really cheap. I've never seen it before. This is beef jerky chewing tobacco. Oh my god. Huh? You know, Are you every, sure it's tobacco? No, it's not tobacco, but it's like they're trying to sell it like tobacco. Uh, yeah, it's jerky dip. It's jerky dip. Wow. You take a little bit of jerky, you put it in your lip and let it sit for a while. I, I, I actually considered this as my it, purchase. Right? I knew I knew this existed, but to take a look at it was really strange. <laughs> Packaged, pre-packaged, hard-boiled eggs Whoa. swimming in their own juices. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Darwin, I'll have you take a look at these we'll because it. Oh man, those. But I didn't know because yeah, I think it is too. It's own juices. Mine was eighty-nine cents. Oh. Oh, what? And it was a pearl accessory. Is <laughs> <laughs> it a grill accessory, like the grill of a car? No, it goes over those big nuts on it. Oh, oh, on the on the wheel. Can I submit to the judge the actual oh, texture? Gosh. Oh gosh! Oh, the jerky. Oh, it smells like dog food. How much was your jerky? Buck thirty-nine. That's cheap. That's cheap. And how much were the eggs? eggs. Um, one fifty-six with tax. That was eighty-nine cents. Eighty-nine cents. <laughs> I think the jerky's the winner. Yeah. Now we all have to dip it. Yeah, I, I, we're dipping. Uh, are you dipping? If there ever was a time to break your vegetarian. Oh, <laughs> right now. This whole tour is now just is the burning. time. I can, kind of want to taste it. <laughs> all right. It tastes good. Just it's put good. it on your tongue. Now, are you dipping it in your, inside your lip? No. I am. It's all dead. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna move that stuff uh, behind this curtain here, just so you know. Okay, great. Um, it all fits like that. Like that okay. Yeah, this is like our third time here, at least. No. All good shows. I was probably at NYU at this point. And Darwin's parents were up, um, and they were in Queens staying with a, another couple that they were also Baba lovers. And I promised uh, Susan and Daryl that I'd get him back to Queens like um, by midnight. You know, quick, easy train ride to Queens. Um, we go down there with like a little extra time. Everything was in total disarray. And like it pushed us a whole like almost an hour later. I mean, and we were gonna be there early to make sure he was already there because at midnight, Silence Day started, which is what they observe um, in honor of Baba's silence for the last like 30 years of his life. Is that right? The, the clock strikes 12 on the train. <laughs> like, and then from then on, Darwin would write an occasional something. Where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, your parents are gonna kill me, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm freaking. He's not saying a word. He's just kind of like, Dar I love Darwin's like uh, spirit on Silence Day is really unique. Yeah, and his face is very expressive. It's <laughs> so funny. That's so funny that you wouldn't let me break silence for silence day. I was like, whatever, like, people break it all the time. People just have a juice fast instead or whatever. Like, <laughs> and yeah, everyone maintained silence. Darwin, the two, anyway, they, they considered breaking well. silence in the middle of the street. We could see them and I was like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were so cute. They were like, <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hugs. 
Yeah. It was so cool. Well, it was such a perfect like, match between you and them because you were like, you were prepared to say everything for both sides. <laughs> and you did. And they were like, so, yes, at every step of the way. So, so what were you saying for their side? I had, well, I'm sure you were so worried and we were thinking about what you would be thinking and I don't know, you know, probably. Well, and I guess that I, I felt A, ridiculous, but B, also like, wow, this is such a simple way to communicate with like, people just listening. Right. I just got to say exactly what happens. Exactly. And nodding and, you know, just the idea that they were saying, we can't break our silence, trust in Baba and everything will be okay. I remember when I moved to New York. Out of like 10 plus years listening to music, loving music, I never paid much attention to lyrics at all. And then, then all of a sudden, there's nothing to listen to except to the lyrics. Sort of keeping your emotions in control enough so that you can express them through words that aren't violent, but that are still, that they ring true enough to give you this sort of release and expression that you, you can't do without.
Yeah. Keep turning to the right. Keep it turned to the right. All right, now. I don't want to see people do that to you. Who's it? Me? Eat, sleep and eat. Eat, sleep, no, eat, see the children. I go up there, I'm definitely like up for the. No, there's a, there's a bathroom this way. Because ah! you jumped, you jumped preemptively into that bed without getting the tour. Mm, I've I know I did several times. Ah. This looks like a good picture. I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to transcend the pop music thing. I'm trying to make pop songs that are catchy and irresistible, but also one layer deeper. But really, what I'm trying to access is just a sort of sense of a deeper sense of spirituality. I mean, I'm not I'm not into morals, you know. And Mayor Baba, my spiritual master, didn't you know? He said, you know, I've come not to teach but to awaken. And therefore, I lay down no precepts. So there's no, it's not about moral, morality, but there is about a sort of spiritual sense of like what feels right. Um, possibly fried pineapple. Yeah, you too. Everyone's like, there's a fried pineapple. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime. Okay, so that's, that, that's no good anymore? That's no good. That's yeah. funny. Y'all, you <laughs> advertise to somebody that's not even there, right? Yeah. We used to take it off, but it's hard. So is he still in business? Yeah, he is. Oh, he is? He has another trailer. Does he still have Yahoo, Pitbull, blah, blah? Yeah, that's what I... Uh, oh, that... so what, okay, what you're advertising for your friends, and that's cool. Yeah, I now guess I am. I kind of regret not recording a Japanese chorus for one of my songs. Our Japanese label, like, sent us the partial translation. Yeah. Yeah, but they yeah. sent me the no, translation no. of like the verse and yeah. stuff, yeah. and I wanted to translate the chorus. Did you say that you wish you would have recorded a Japanese chorus? Uh huh. To which one? To Radar Detector? Yeah, or Bad Day. It's been on my to-do list for like That's awesome. a long time. So the verses would still be English? Yeah. Ah, uh, I'd love to. Hear that's that. what they do. I feel a little guilty about that because like they went to the effort of translating it and stuff, but I wanted to do the chorus. There's a few Avril Lavigne songs where they translate the chorus. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's go quick because we don't we don't really have that much time to spend. My first job was uh, in a strip mall. It was an art house movie theater in a strip mall. You know, I did <laughs> I did like show up to work late one day, so I screwed up in that way. And then there was this younger kid, this young upstart, Tim, who started working there after me who got a quarter raise because he organized the stock room without being asked or anything. And I was like, I want a quarter raise. Uh, yeah, I worked at Wizards of the Coast, um, which was uh, the Magic the Gathering Pokemon store. I, had to, I also worked at a Pizza Hut the mall. I loved the mall. I was a shoe shiner at a golf course, at a, at a country club, and I worked with this 80-year-old black guy named John Swan who would tell me all his old stories. Talk, talk about the girl that you worked with at Pizza Hut. 
Uh, <laughs> she was um, really sexual, and she would say things to me like, after when we were cleaning up, she would say things like, Andrew, I want your penis on a platter, and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, she would say like, if you were chasing me around and I was naked and you caught me, you wouldn't know what to do with me. <laughs> she was eventually fired for stealing from the register. <laughs> Touring is the ultimate. I knew that, you know, to make the tour successful, that we'd have to stick together. And that sticking together through that the intimate experience of touring is no small thing. You really have to have it worked out um, on a personal level. Greg, Michelle, and Andrew. The experiences that we've had as friends, the intimacy that we shared as friends, has just been like like off the scale, beautiful and fun. It's been the experience of a lifetime and I will remember it forever. No, we're not doing the beer marathon. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm actually going into Blanchard's. Take us there. You're going to where? Into What's Blanchard's? I'm buying a keg for the first time ever. Oh, you have a party? Um, sort of. It's not my party. Uh, are we invited to it? Um, it's, it's kind of far away, but... We have a car. It's in Newton. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Wait, wait. Let's go get that girl's number to the party. Do you guys want to go to a keg party later? Hey. Can we really come? What? Can we really come? We're cool. Wait, where are you guys from? New York. What are you filming for? It's a documentary of our tour. Oh, cool. We're playing You're in a band? Venue here. Cool. Yeah, my What's friends are What's the party for? Um, it's like just, you know, my friend's parents, friend from high school. Parents are out of town. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, you can have my number and text okay. me later if you want. I'm Flo. My name's Andrew. Nice to meet you. Hey, I'm Darwin. We nice go to with meet the flow, as you see. Never heard okay, that. Okay, what's your number? Oh, no. I'm uh, 617. Well, are you playing tonight? Yep. Cool. You want to come? Um, well, I'm going to this party. Yeah, set up. <laughs> but, um, Where are you set up? Okay. Well, have a good show. Um, maybe Thanks. see you guys later. Okay. I think that's nice to meet you. Me. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, no problem. I mean, not Okay. Oh man, I did go with the flow. You have to be careful. You <laughs> gotta watch things out that people that. hear every day that are new to you. Well, I'm stoked. To the party. I've never heard that before. Oh, that was like women's studies. I know, that was. Oof. <laughs> women's studies was low. That was a low blow. <laughs> oh, go with the flow. We were staying with this uh, acquaintance of Darwin through the Baba community. We got to her apartment, getting to know each other, first, you know, five minutes. And she's like, oh, so I'm uh, finishing up my uh, master's in women's studies at the university. And I was like, oh yeah, that's interesting. We're also in women's studies. <laughs> and she's, <laughs> it was not, did not go well. Oh, oh it fell flat. It more than fell flat. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Katie Flynn. Yeah. Are we going that way? We could make a series of small crossings. Let's make a series of small crossings. So we should probably, we should probably head that we way. We better, you know the small crossings we were talking about? The small crossings. We should probably get started here. Yeah. Hey, this is Darwin. Oh no, this is, yeah, this is Darwin Smith. Oh, okay. No harm. Shoot. Wrong number, guys. Wrong number. Wrong Google number. They asked for Pat Watson. Said, no, uh, we're, this is a, we're a touring band engaged in a series of small crossings. I think you have the wrong number. <laughs> Last show of the tour. Last yes. show. Last. Now, suddenly, my schedule is free. <laughs>
got them in my pocket at all times. Thank you. 
been really uh, invigorating in the last three years to have these um, goals and obstacles like to work towards and against. And having achieved like what I set out to do with this album has kind of left me in a place of like, you know, so happy with the choice that I made.